Hello, how's it going, everybody? And welcome to the Business Origin Story Podcast. I'm your host, Drew Mitchell. And today with me is uh, Suriel, and he is the owner of a Scurio uh, Creations here. And uh, why don't you go ahead and take the floor and introduce yourself? So, okay, my name is Suriel. I'm a Scurio Creations. My, is my company. Uh, we create uh, content for events, also engagements. I do a product too. But mostly focus on events, on events, and also building your online presence through social media with high quality content. I've been in Las Vegas since I was three years old. I've uh, been in the media world since I was like literally since I was a kid, and that's how my creativity grew up when I was a kid and everything like that. So, what inspired you? I know you've been doing your business since 2019, but what inspired you to get started with your business? Well, you know what really inspired me? Once I was in the financial service industry for three years, since like 19 to like 21 years old, I wanted to literally start creating content for other people and other businesses. So I started literally with my iPhone 6, just taking photos and videos back then, charging like $50 back then. And then I was like, you know what? I can make money off of this. And then I hired a photographer back then because I was like, oh, wow, I'll get my camera. Let me hire a photographer. Because uh, I was in sales since I was a kid, grew up in sales because my friends did a lot of sales, direct selling. And then throughout the years, I was like, oh, what if I start implementing, like, uh, doing content for businesses? Because I knew back then, when I was 2019, when I left the insurance industry, I was like, you know what, this, this, uh, the creator economy is going to keep on growing more and more. Back then, the tension, that was when I started realizing, like, you know what, I, I, I'm going to stay in this niche because I know this niche is going to grow, grow more and more eventually. I feel like that's kind of like part of the course, you know, it's like you, you kind of start and kind of figure yeah. out what your niche is and and yeah. uh, you just learn by doing. And, and sometimes it's like you, you look back at your old uh, client projects and you're like, <laughs> oh, you know, like, uh, you know, but that's how you learn. <laughs> I wasn't scared of failing. Because, you know, most people, when they're creating, they're starting a company or starting something, they're scared to fail, you know. So it's part of being successful in life. You know, the yeah. mistakes, the failure. But I had to figure it out the time when I was doing this. You know, I wasn't scared. I was like, I don't care about I fail multiple times. You know, I've done so many projects at my younger age. You know, like, I wasn't scared of fail. I think it's important to not be scared of failing. That's part of life, you know. We don't learn. We don't take growth. And no. uh, we don't learn we mistakes. We're not going to grow up to the next level in our lives. I was going to ask you, okay, so you, you, you went into how you got started. So what was like the biggest challenges you faced in the early stages, you know, starting your business? I mean, in my early stages was just trying, trying to figure out like what to charge at the beginning. You know, like, I was, oh, like, oh, what if I, like, people were like, oh, you're charging 150 just recording with an iPhone. You know, a lot of people were like, what are you charging me so much? You have a camera here. And I was like, I was like, whoa, like, you know, I was like, well, you know, I, when I, at the beginning, I was charging 50 bucks. Then I started getting more and more clients. I was like, oh, I guess I'm I pumping up the price. And I remember one client I work with, he's like, why are you charging me so much? We just, you're just recording with your iPhone. I was like, whoa, I'm like, well, this is what I do. And that was the, the challenge at the beginning because they're like, why are you were charging me 150 or 220? That back then you're, you're like you're just recording an iPhone six, and I started to I was you know at the beginning that was kind of hard. I was like, you know what I cannot let it stop me. Then eventually I got a camera. I knew it was gonna be that wasn't gonna be easy like hard, but but the gear at the beginning was kind of like, what are you charging me so much? Yeah, just recording an yeah. You know, I think an iPhone six wasn't high quality as we have iPhone right now. <laughs> that is um, true. <laughs> I, I filmed some stuff with the iPhone six, so I I uh, back yeah. in the day for clients, so I hundred percent. Yeah. So back then, you know, I was like, I didn't pay attention to that because I was just like, I'm just trying to make, just trying to build people's presence online. And like, you know, I'm bilingual, so I work for Hispanics and English people. So that was like the most thing in the in the Hispanic community because uh, I work with both communities, English and Spanish, I work with everybody. But I noticed in the Hispanic community, like they're like, oh, I don't know how to make content, I'll, and then. You know, I position mm. myself in the community as a content creator expert. So that's the thing uh, I learned throughout the time. Back then, when I was starting, um, you know, build the relationships, the relationships that I had in the past. And when I left the other industry, I already had those relationships. So, so I'm like, oh, I'm doing something new. Like, I'll build your relation, uh, build, I'll build your social media presence on. And people are like, oh, yeah, how much do you charge? I'm like, oh, yeah, just like 
80, 50 back then. That was, you know, back then. Yeah. But that's why I started to make it happen back then, no matter what. Yeah. And that's really smart because I, I know a lot of people who run different video businesses, they don't kind of go deep with their clients. They just try and get a ton of clients rather than just building the relationships. And so you're going to client to client to client. So that was that was really smart of you to just build those relationships over time. And then you just would improve and get more gear. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's what, exactly what I did. You know, I, at the beginning, you know, but, you know, I was like, I already have the trust. They already trust me. They already like me. Like the only thing eventually I'll, I'll upgrade throughout the time. And I knew throughout the time they were still going to come back, you know, because at the end, I'm not I'm not very like transactional, very more relationship. Like every new anyone I meet, I'm like, yeah, I do photography, videography, I, I explain everything that I do. Uh, but I'm like, I'm like, just see my social media. Then I show up my social media, like, oh yeah. And I'm like, I actually want to follow you. Then I'm like, I, I want to connect with you. Like, I love for working with other creators, see how they work. Everybody has different styles, and I like to learn different styles. You know, doesn't mean I'm gonna copy you, but I like to learn every every style because everybody has different styles. We all do just everything different. You know? Yeah, and, and that that's really how you can uh, expand your your service offerings too, is just by learning yeah. how different creators do things. And, you know, um, I mean, I, I went through that thing when I started uh, my business, oh, which is interesting because I started um, my business. I've been doing freelance videography for like 16 years, but I started my yeah. business in 2019 and and yeah, it was just like so many mistakes and things that I made, but uh, it's like one of those things where my attitude now is it's like, you know, you just have to let it unfold and not put pressure on yourself to have it figured out by a certain date because <laughs> that'll mess you up. Like I said, but like I used to suck, suck, like really suck, like really bad back then. And I was like, <laughs> nah, I suck less. You know, because, you know, it's part of like, oh, I made those mistakes at my young age. Uh, but I think that's part of it's part of the process. I think you need to become really successful, become a big global brand, becoming like building a billion dollar company. It takes a lot of mistakes, you know, and like everybody wants it super easy. Everybody wants to get rich easy. That's part of being like uh, starting your own company, starting something, you know, it doesn't matter what industry you are in. Too. That, 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 yeah, that's so true. And I'm curious, how did you go from using your name to coming up with the name for your, your company? You, you mentioned it, it means shadows um, in Dark Spanish. Patient. So, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, at the beginning, I was just like freelance, like you, you know, like every, every day content creator. I was a freelance, you know, when I was gonna, you know, at the beginning, I'm like, I was just. Like, I was like, am I going to, like, literally going to do something? I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, like, get this dope ass name. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to change it in a year. No. So, like, so I sit down with a friend. And he's like, what do you wear a lot? I'm like, I wear black. <laughs> I, was like, he's like, I was like, he's like, I wear black all the time. He's like, well, why don't you, like, what do you wear? Like, what do you wear to name it through creation? I was like, you know, it actually kind of sounds legit. Because I'm like, you know what? I don't want to, like, I don't want to Las Vegas something i don't want to look vegas right you know there's so many vegas stuff you know i was like i want something, oh, very unique, something that's gonna make me stand out so i was like okay we thought about this name and i was like you know what i'm gonna, I'm gonna start making this dope ass logo so we can start making this dope ass logo with a friend of mine and then she's like oh this is yeah, actually this actually sounds legit i'm like yeah actually it does sound legit at the beginning you know in the hispanic community like man why why you think at the beginning the people didn't take it like very very like they accepted it at the beginning. They didn't accept it, and then okay, but throughout this time now they accept it. But at the beginning, couple, you know, a couple years ago, they're like, why are you, why are you hiding something? I'm like, no. <laughs> you know? I'm like I'm not hiding nothing. Yeah, that that's cool though. That that's cool that you yeah. came up with it. You just kind of have to. Uh, I, I find that when you are coming with a brand, it's like you know those things. Um, really help you know things that you're already doing or wearing or yeah. you know because that's all part of your brand and and because yeah. you're you're your brand you know yeah 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 you're the brand and you're the content you know uh and that, that's what i you know when i work with people i tell people I'm like hey just every single time you wake up you have you have content you know when you're doing meetings that's content when you're doing like stuff that's content like everything's literally content like you know um you know like it really is life, everything's content this is you wake up no matter like you know 
like I don't even know what to post. Like I think we make it so complicated in ourselves. I'm curious. Like, um, how do you how did you transition from business owners to getting into the conferences? Was it through a connection, or how did you do that? Yeah, it was, it was a relationship, <laughs> and it was relationships that I built throughout the time throughout the years. And you know, like those relations that I maintained when I was younger, like from 2017 to 2018, the people that knew me back then, mm. I maintained those relationships. Even to this day, my mentors who were like, who mentored me when I was 14, 15, 16, I still call them like, and now like, they're like, oh, when I work with you. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's the important thing that I believe in the, the relationship. That's what, that's what I mentioned earlier, not build, not burning down the bridges, you know, because you know anybody who's hearing or somebody's gonna say oh something that i didn't get along with this person right like, okay, you never know like if you burn that bridge it's gonna mess up your future project in the future you know um, yeah you know, like, you know it's like you never know that connection in the years whatever happened whatever happened but whatever but then like you never know that that person could refer you one person one connection could literally lead to multiple handshakes could change your life and yeah. i always i I always preach and I always believe you're always one connection away from changing your life. Just like your one video you post every day on social media changes your life. You're one handshake in, in your business every day to change your life. Anyone you meet every day, literally, you never know. They could take you to a million dollars, to 12 million, to a billion. Like, you know, you never know. You don't need a, like, a lot of people. You just need one handshake that could change your entire business for the rest yeah. of your life. And, and it's one of those things where I noticed with uh, other uh, video business owners, right? Yeah, I, and I struggled with this too in the very beginning where it's hard uh, with certain difficult clients not to take that yeah. uh, personal. And then if you take it personal though, the problem is you, you can end up burning that bridge. So it's it's uh, that's why it's so important, I feel like, to not take things personal and just be like, okay, Maybe it's just this one project we don't vibe with and, and you just, you, you know, end things kind of professionally and then let time pass. And then yeah. you never know when you reach back, it could work. Yeah. You know, and then doing business is like dating, you know, <laughs> like, when you, <laughs> you know, it's exactly like dating. When a girl, when you, you ask a girl, or your wife, or anyone, it's like marketing. She's going to say yes or no. Brandy is when she says yes, <laughs> you know. It's the same thing, you know, when it comes to marketing, you know, or like building a brand, you know, when uh, it's like when you're taking out, it's like when you're dating someone, you're not going to go when the, you're not going to marry someone you meet literally like in downtown or, or at the church. <laughs> yeah. Like you mean, you're not going to go with them like, oh yeah, I'm going to marry this person. This person is the one. It's the same thing in business. It's first you got to give value and then, you know, and, you know, just bring value and just like you know, build a relationship and then pe eventually people do see your content, see your posting every day. They're like, oh, damn, you're actually, you are like, you know, I say people, I say people, sh people shouldn't say, I'm, I'm not busy. You should say you are busy. You're like, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not busy. But like, you know, at the beginning, I was making those mistakes. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not busy. And then I was like, if I shouldn't show I was busy, people were like, oh, dang, you know, but, but that's how it is in the business world. You know, you learn the mistakes in life, you know, in the business world too. Uh, oh, and then by the way, I wanted to ask you really quick, um, how do you stay motivated and excited in your business? You know, what keeps you uh, moving forward in your business? Like I'm always shooting my camera, always having my camera always. But the thing keeps me motivated and it's like, it's like, you know, right now I'm, I'm 26. I'm about, I'm about to be 27. But um, like I already see myself like the version of me when I'm 35. You know, I'm super excited to see how I'm going to be the version of age 35, age where the version of me when I'm 40, the version of me when I'm 50. I'm already like, I, I made it to where I'm at right now. And it feels like a lot, but it's not a lot for me. Like, I want, I, I, I'm super, like, I see my, I always see myself like, when I was 14, I saw myself speaking in, in front of people. And I was already doing that because my parents were like, oh, start practicing in front of people. So you can learn mm. to speak. And I was like, I was like, I told my dad, one day I'm gonna be speaking in front of people. And then, you know, that was like when I was a kid. So my dad would always give me the opportunity to be in front of people and practice my speaking. And I told my dad, one day I'm gonna be giving conferences, not just in Vegas, but around the world. I was like, then, you know, as something that I believed it. And then, you know, now it's starting to happen more, more and more. 
So it's something that there's a lot of stuff when I was younger, I wrote it down and I was like, you know, I wrote it down, but also I, I look at it. I was like, okay, time to take full action. You know, on my phone, on my phone, I build like a vision board to my phone. So I see it all the time. Nice. Cause I, I see my vision. Like I don't see where I'm at. You know, I don't see myself as a small creator or a small person. I see myself like, as a, I'm already a bigger person. Cause that's, yeah. like, that's my, you know, like, it's like, you're gonna like if you have a small like if you don't, if you think small you're gonna achieve small but if you have a bigger mindset you're gonna you're still the same you know um you want to achieve bigger things you just go for all big you know it doesn't matter you know and you know when i was younger like there's so many things that i wrote and i was like you know what i'm willing to make this happen no matter what and i always believed it you know the thing that drives me all the time is when people tell me i can't do it and you know I'm like okay like don't tell me i can't do it but you know that drives me because i'm um, like you know like okay i'll you tell me i can't do it uh, and i'll i don't have to prove it to you i have to prove it to myself so you know i always told myself the competition that was against it's me against me but it drives yeah. me is my you know my vision is my vision when i'm like 40 50 i already see myself way bigger level than i already am right now you know like having a vision board or something like that and and journaling or you know, those yeah. things are really important because it keeps you thinking about, oh, yeah, this is this doable, I, you know, and then just kind of speaking for myself when I started, it just seems yeah, so yeah. far away, these these goals. But the more mm-hmm. you journal, the more you visualize and and have a vision board, you're like, you know what, like this is actually more achievable than than I think. And yeah, so and you just- really are you are really fighting against yourself. Yeah. And just take massive, massive action, you know. Like hardcore action, you know, it doesn't matter if you're like you're nine to five, if you're a creator, you're like, oh, trying to start in the creator economy. You like just you say you work a nine to five. Yeah. So you're like, I don't have time. But you do have time. Work from six to nine, then nine to ten. You can make so much money throughout the time. But now with more experience, more wisdom, mm-hmm. more mentorship that I have, when I've gotten people with different people that I've I met that mentor me, have guided me to where I'm at, you know, and I'm grateful for the mentors that I have. Now, so that's also one of the key points as a creator or a business owner or as a video uh, creator. Having a mentor, you know, it doesn't matter if they don't do videography or current creation. It could be someone else there in a different industry. You know, like, if you want to become an investor, you like learn from an investor, you know? Yeah. Like, if you want to become, you know, like, build relationships online, um, go to network events, always take out your camera when you're anywhere. Like, you know, right yeah. now, like, you know, this last time I took out my camera, People are like boom, boom, boom. Like, what's your social media? Boom, boom, like that. So you know, you always got to be like talking about your business all the time, making content about your business. Yeah. Don't be behind the content about your, your business. Like everything is content. Like as a creator, we should be creating uh, all the time, twenty four seven. You know, like yeah. But it, you know, you know that's that's what I say. You know, like and just don't be afraid. You know, to post online. It doesn't matter if people are gonna judge you. Uh, people are still gonna judge regardless if you're not posting or not. Like you know. Look, I say just don't be afraid. You know, just go on, go all in. That's a really good point that you made. Is it's about more about putting in the reps and not really worrying what people think, and just putting in the reps yeah. and and uh, just putting and and then by being having that consistency, that's what gets you noticed by by people. And I wanted to ask you um, just to kind of transition out about before we wrap out of here. I have a couple final questions, and that is. Yeah. Um, so one of them is what is your um goals for the future with with your your production company well my goal like is just able to just keep on running the company and my, my, my ultimate goal is to become an investor like three so i'm just and i also have my media company so i'll just be just running it and you know that's literally you know i'll still keep on shooting but very little by the next couple five ten years but I'm also going to go to become an investor, like, you know, and just, you know, like, buy businesses yeah. that already, like, they're, they're, they're still, like, left behind, you know, like, and then, like, grow them with content creation and technology. Like, literally, that's my, like, that's my goal for my production company. I'm, like, training multiple photographers, um, you know. So, little by little, I just, just as teacher, it's just mentoring and directing, like, literally, my thing, and just become just mentor people. I love mentoring people. I love helping people. 
um, having that clarity in your brand and your social media. Like I love doing that. I'm entering like uh, I do. I'm entering to photographers. One of my friends, um, you know, we you know we were we grew up yeah. together, and then he's like, man, I want to get to photography. Can you help me? I'm like, yeah, just shoot for me for my events when I'm speaking, and uh, so I help him behind the scenes content. And I made I made I like got his first gig, and he's like, man, I was like, I never knew you can make so much. You can make money out of this. I'm like don't worry, I'll teach you about the techniques and the strategies. So. So I'm very grateful for, you know, to be able to teach more people like that. Someone else. Also, I'm teaching her, too. She wants to learn photography. So I went to went with her in the field, too, um, you know, to teach her how to shoot. And then, you know, now, start, now I just start teaching people what I learned throughout the years, you know, because I'm, like, as a leader, you should be creating more leaders, um, you know, because yeah. that's what I believe. As a leader, we, don't, we still keep climbing the mountain over and over. You know, the mountain doesn't stop, you know. As leaders, we still keep growing, growing as a person, but also the success just keeps on growing more and more. And he's able to just get, just have more success stories that, are, you know, just like someone inspired me um, to get into this world when I was 14. Now I just want to be able to duplicate and so when I leave and like have this big legacy. Not only mm-hmm. surreal, it just help me for content photography, photography, but he created more creators. And you know that's my legacy. People build that legacy too. Next couple of years. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that that is really cool. That you you um, that philosophy that you have. Uh, uh, you're a leader, and you want to make more leaders because uh, that's really the best way to I feel to uh, to build a team and to build. Yeah. Um, really really good production company because it, it's just um when you build a team of different leaders then mm-hmm. you can just l- not leave them to their own devices but you can you can you know let them do their own thing and trust that they got it and trust that they know what they're doing because you train them and whereas if you if you're just uh if you don't have that approach it's just they're yeah. you know what i'm saying they'll be coming up to you and they're going to be like oh you know what do i do here what do i do this and but if you give them that agency to figure out problems on their own and to empower yeah. them to be a leader then they they come up yeah. with their own creative solutions which is awesome oh yeah and that's what i love to do and you know the, these people that i'm mentoring like he's a friend of mine we go back from 2009 that we know each other um you know he's like he called me recently he's like man like well, can I, how can I get back to photography? He has, he had his camera there in his room. I was like, man, don't leave a dust in there. So much. <laughs> like, you know, this, this camera could take you to so many places. Like, now I told him, you know, I told him that camera could take you so many places. So what inspired him when he saw my social media that I went to take a, went to go cover WolfCon with Ryan Pineda. That's when he's like, he's like, man, like, how can I get into photography? Yeah. Like, well, come for me my, my events when I'm speaking at. And that's when that's when he's like now he's like hey we're like tell me what else do you need like want me to follow you take photos like I'm like yeah yeah just follow me I'm, I'm super grateful that I'm building and building more people because that's what I love to do you know people are like oh I don't I don't want to share my knowledge I'm like well like, what like, why are you afraid of that <laughs> like yeah you know, the more the more you give the more you receive you know yeah that's my final question to you uh, before we wrap yeah. on out of here is where can people find you online what's the best way to get in touch with you if people want to learn more yeah my, my instagram handles are surreal cruise on facebook and then surreal cruise on linkedin surreal cruise south Tello official on instagram and um all my platforms are like all my platforms is um everything is all surreal cruise that's where you're gonna find me you know, everywhere, and then you know, I you can message me, we can book a session, we can book a call, or anything. You know, that's what I'm here for. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for for being a guest on the podcast. I, I really appreciate it. It's awesome to dive deep and learn more about your your production company and and how you got started and and all that jazz. I really appreciate you coming on. No, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. It's a huge honor being here. You know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for for tuning in and uh, checking out this episode. And you guys, uh, thanks for watching and stay classy.